Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between October 6th and 13th, 2018. We are reaching peak times when it comes to changes and transformation regarding Venusian subjects, regarding relationships, regarding our own satisfaction, regarding our own value and the value of the people we hold in our lives. Um, this is a time that is not made for um, harsh, unthought through decisions that might impact our life for the long-term manner. First of all, I want to uh, apologize a minute because my eye is tearing. I have a, I, th I think it's a viral thing, but I'm not sure. I think I got it from my daughter. You know how the first days of kindergarten are. It's like a petri dish. <laughs> and I think she brought something over, but hopefully it would get better in a few days. Let's go down to the weekdays, but just to finish up what I, what I had to say, the summary of this week. So if you are, I know some, some of you are translating this message into other languages. So just a summary. Peak time when it comes to relationships, when it comes to how I find my own value and how I find value within the relationships with other people in my life. Of course, income and the way I bring in money. And generally, my peace, harmony and satisfaction in life. This is not a time to make harsh, uh, unthought through decisions. This is the time to put question marks on everything that we were so sure is steadfast and, and, and true in our lives and maybe see things from a different angle. Especially, by the way, I have Georgia by my side here, just that you know. This is a mirror reflecting light to the other side of my face so it won't be half dark, half um, lithen. So Georgia is just here by my side. Let me just fix this, yes. Anyway, so I would say that there could be a lot of turbulations. There could be some challenges that are coming up now. This is the time to actually question things. This is the time to see things from a different light. But it's not yet the time to make any long-term decisions. Let's go down to the weekdays. The sixth. The sixth is a Saturday. It has a grand earth trine in the sky. It's a time that could help us formulate, substantiate and deepen things that are needed uh, to be more rooted in, in our life. On the one hand, on the other hand, it's a great time for innovation, for bringing new things in to our subjective point of view, to the way we step out to life, to what we include within ourselves and who we are. So all kinds of regimes and, and, and I don't want to say habits because habits in English have a, a negative tendency, but um, things that we do consistently, uh, new things can be integrated into that consistent system right now. Um, the evening of the Saturday, of Saturday the 6th, is, is really nice. There's a moon sextile Venus. Uh, it could be a fun night with people around you or eating, drinking, and just having fun. Uh, remember, I'm speaking in um, Central European time. It's about nine hours back if you're in Eastern, uh, Eastern uh, time in the U.S. And if you are in the uh, Pacific in Australia and New Zealand, it's about 10 hours ahead. The seventh Sunday is a tremendously energetic morning and just it could be a very beautiful day. It's a great day to study. It's a great day to do anything connecting with spirit. There's a sextile to um, Jupiter and there is a trine to Pluto making it a good day for intimacy and sex and introspection as well. But the energies are going to be a little too high for introspection. So I would say go outside. On that day, the Sun conjunct series, Demeter, as well. This is a wonderful time to give out of love, you know, without asking anything in return. But on the other hand, if we are givers already, 
this is a good time to examine if what we're giving and how we're giving is actually producing results on the ground. Is it actually fruitful? Is it actually developmental? Are our gifts appreciated? This is a time that these matters could be on the table. Um, the eighth is a sensitive day. It's a time that we need to be aware of our own pains and aches and not to act out of our post-traumatic place and really uh, be sensitive with other people around us as well. The evening time is really energetic. I suggest you do something, some kind of activity. And here's a suggestion for you. Early evening on the 8th is a great time to see the Draconoids meteor shower. It's not one of the most dense meteor showers we have each year. It's about 10, 10 meteors an hour, approximately, coming from the constellation Draco, mainly. And unlike other uh, meteor showers that are mostly seen either late at night or before sunrise, this one is the, the best time to view this one is just at the early evening. And there's not going to be any moon in the sky, which makes it perfect if you have no clouds to look up and see some falling stars, as long as you are away from light pollution and uh, city lights, of course. The ninth... Uh, is a new moon day. It's Remember that whenever we're talking about new moons, the day before, the day after, and the day itself are kind of an imprinting, energetic, emotional imprinting for the next lunar cycle. So if I'm happy, gay, and very satisfied, something of that is going to go on with me to that lunar cycle. And if I'm angry and vengeful and and Un, uh, unappreciative of things around me, something of that is going to go with me through that lun uh, lunar cycle. So be aware of that energetic sponge that you are. This is a new moon in 15 degrees of Libra, 48 minutes. It has to do a lot again with Venusian subjects, with our relationships and how we find balance, harmony, satisfaction and tranquility through our connections with others. About justice within those relationships and not giving in or sacrificing too much. This is a new moon that squares Pluto. So it's um, um, level of combustion. It's a, a, a possible, uh, po it's, 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 um, it just got a lot, let's just say it just got a lot more dramatic with that square to Pluto. When Pluto is involved, the transformational processes of death and rebirth are heightened and the highs and lows are heightened. We could go through so many emotions on the 9th and the 10th. We could be happy one moment and angry the next, exhilarated the other moment and then unsatisfied a moment later. So we really have to watch it and if we actually try to move away from our emotions and be in a more logical place, we can uh, because of other transits in the sky that I'll mention in, the sec in a second. But the thing is to work harmoniously between the heart and the mind at that time and not be too uh, disconnected from one system or the other. Um, it can be challenging. It can be a challenging new moon. It can be that things come to us unexpectedly. Um, the tenth itself is a day that Mercury moves into Scorpio. The moon is in Scorpio conjunct Mercury then the moon conjunct Uranus, then Uranus conjuncts Mercury. So it's a lot about communication, fast moving, uh, 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 electronic, advanced, futuristic communication. It's about thinking, but not just any thinking, thinking outside the box, thinking in an innovative manner, in an avant-garde manner. It's about allowing yourselves to be different, it's about knowing that that difference can actually mean you're unique and ahead of your time and you could progress people around you as well. Um, but it's about bringing that out in a positive manner that could actually be swallowed by other people, could actually be ingested by other people and not in a way that would either be too painful and hurtful to other people. I remind you that Scorpio and Mercury together can produce words that hit you underneath your belt and, and, and make you fall apart because they have some cruelty and some truth to them. So we have to be careful 
It's about power within our communication, power within our thoughts, power and introspection regarding how we do things and how we um, maintain and, and actually better our situation and our health in life. So, it, the tenth is a very fast-paced day. And as I said, allow yourself to walk away a step from your emotions into that logical space and allow that logical space to be free and innovative, but try and balance the two. Um, the 11th is Thursday. Um, on that day, the square between Venus and Mars is exact. It's a day with a lot of potential for combustion within our relationships as well within work environments. It's a day that we could feel that we need our satisfaction faster. We need it now. We can't wait with it. Um, pushing away our desires could be a problem on that day. And the 11th, the moon conjuncts Venus and then on the 12th it conjuncts Jupiter. When the moon is between Jupiter and, and Venus, it's a blessed time. It's a time that we could feel much more tranquility and harmony and benevolence. And basically that we're lucky. But these are in Scorpio and they are squaring Mars. So the need to challenge ourselves or the challenges coming from our surroundings in the field of just building a life that is more satisfactory to ourselves within our relationships, bringing it to a more balanced a place of equilibrium is a lot of what these energies are about. Um, on Friday, we have, uh, that's the 12th, we have the Moon conjunct Jupiter and the Sun squaring Pluto. And when the Sun squares Pluto, all the days before, like five days before, five days after, are more intense. We have to be careful from subjects of ego, pride, and, 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 and again, not being, uh, taking dominance, being cruel, or trying to exert power over others, or letting others do that to us. Uh, and it's a day, these are days that we could see our hidden shadows, we could transform throughout these days, who we are and how we shed light in this world. The 10th is a Saturday, it's a beautiful day, it's very energetic. Uh, I suggest you do something with it, you go outside. Uh, nature is wonderful on that day if you have good weather. And the afternoon is a little lethargic, tired and forgetful. Uh, it's better for being either involved in art or music or uh, listening or eating those things uh, or just being at home uh, or relaxing. And this is not a great time to exert mental effort or physical effort Saturday afternoon. Anyway, that was about it. Uh, we're opening up a group for practicing natal charts. If you want to join, let me know. And of course, beginners group and intermediate group if you still want to join us, let us know. Anyway, thank you for listening and commenting and sharing this and, uh, and liking this because it exposes this video to more people. Have a beautiful week. This is Boaz Fighter. Namaste and goodbye.